Hey everybody, Pastor Jeff here from Christ Church in South Philly. Today, I want to talk with you about joy. That might seem like an odd thing to talk about because we're certainly going through dark and troubling times. And yet, notice that I didn't say we're going to talk about happiness. No, happiness and joy are two very different things. Happiness is what we feel based upon what's happening to us. And so if we like what's happening to us, we feel happy. And so happiness is, is a circumstantial feeling. But joy is something much deeper. Joy is a satisfaction that we can have deep down in our souls. It, it's a sense of being fully at peace. It's a sense of being content and, and just feeling well and, and full. And so joy, it's, it's not based on a circumstance. No, joy is an inner state of being that we can have. And today we're going to see how we can have joy by looking at Psalm 51, verse 12. I'm reading from the English Standard Version, and it says this, Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. This psalm was written by a man named David, and when he was writing this, he was not feeling joy. His soul was not content because he actually had committed some sin, some really big sin. He had um, gone and had adultery with a woman, got her pregnant, and then uh, she, that woman had another husband, and so he ended up you know, conspiring to have the husband murdered, and then he forced the woman to be married to him. And so this, he was pretty, pretty jacked up, and he was feeling convicted about this. He's, he's broken about this. Um, he starts by saying in, in verse 3, like, I know my transgressions, my sin is ever before me. Like, he's feeling guilty and weighed down. And so he just, he asked God, Lord, I, I want to have joy. He wants to have contentment. He wants to, again, be at a place of peace. And so look to where he goes for the joy. He says, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Right? He looks for salvation in God. He, he says it's your salvation. Notice, it's not a salvation that he feels like he had earned. No, he hadn't earned it. He, he had totally blown it. If salvation was up to him, well, then he was really in a bad spot because he certainly did nothing to deserve being saved. But he says, restore to me the joy of your salvation. He, he isn't looking for what he has earned. He's not saying my salvation, what I deserve. No, he's saying, God, this is your salvation. This is what you freely give. And I'm just asking that you give me the joy of that salvation. Right? He's coming to God and he's pleading and asking for God to be merciful to him, for God to, to save him from his sins. Right? There's only something that God can do. As Christians, we know there's something that God has done, right? We know that God has come in Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and then rise to new life to prove that he is truly God. And so Jesus is God's salvation. And so we can have joy when we look to Christ. Like no matter what we're going through, our joy can be restored when we look to the salvation that God offers to us in Jesus. Happiness is based upon what's happening but joy comes from a conviction about who Jesus is and what he's done for us. And no matter what we go through in life, nothing can change who Jesus is and what he's done for us. And so therefore, we can always be joyful no matter what we're going through. We might be happy, but we can be joyful because it's a joy that comes from God. But then notice he says, restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. He needs God to give him joy, and then he wants God to hold him that joy. He wants to keep that joy coming. And how's that joy going to continue to come his way? He says, through a willing spirit. That word willing means a desire to follow God, right? And so watch very carefully. The salvation does not come from him being willing, him following God. His salvation is not something, that he, again, he's earned. No, it's God's salvation. It's your salvation, he says. And so he's saved by what God does. But then as he is experiencing what God has done, he's saying, Lord, I want to be willing to follow you. Because of what you've done to save me, I want to be willing to follow you. And that's how he knows that this joy is going to be a continuous thing. He, he doesn't want to just experience joy in that moment when he's, when he's saved. He wants to be upheld in joy. He wants to continue to have joy through following God. You know, a lot of times we can think that following God is a downer. Like, okay, I'm going to, you know, not sin. It's really, really fun to sin. But, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold back, you know, because that's what God wants me to do. But no, God's saying, listen, no, 
Sinning is not about, you know, holding back. No, sin is about God holding out, out to us what is something better. Now he's saying don't sin because God wants us to find joy, right? Sin might make you temporarily ha happy, but man, when we follow God with a willing spirit, that's how we experience true joy because we are following the one who died for us, the one who loves us, the one whom our souls were created to be in a relationship with. And so we can experience joy in God as we follow the path that Jesus has set out for us. And so this is how we experience joy. It comes from realizing that salvation is found in Jesus alone. And it comes from God upholding us to have a willing spirit as we follow him. We're not saved by how we follow God, but once we are saved, man, our heart should be to want to follow God with everything we've got. And when we do, that is a life that is full of joy. I hope that encourages you today. I hope that inspires you to give God your all and to pursue the path of joy by following him with a willing spirit. God bless you.